Hi, everyone. Welcome to uh, our online auditorium, Northwestern's online auditorium. I'm glad you could make it. Hope everyone had a good long Labor Day weekend. Maybe you got some college searching done over the long weekend or did some better, more fun stuff. Uh, my name is Andrew Linehan. I'm an associate director of admission at Northwestern. I'm a graduate of Northwestern from 2005 from the School of Journalism. Um, I'm joined today by a current student, Anna Maria. Uh, Anna Maria, why don't you introduce yourself? Thank you, Andrew. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Anna Maria. I'm a rising fourth year student from Orange County, California, double majoring in cognitive science and history. Um, behind me is my puppy, Penelope. She's an honorary Northwestern student, mostly uh, working on napping. Um, as a native Californian, it was absolutely essential that I find some piece of the ocean wherever I went to school to feel more at home. And I can tell you with confidence that Lake Michigan has served as a more than perfect substitute. When I'm not exploring the outdoors indoors at my climbing gym in Chicago or volunteering with incarcerated students enrolled in Northwestern's prison education program, you can find me propped up on the lake fill with a book or my laptop. For those of you who are curious, the Wi-Fi does work perfectly out there. Why do I feel like the pup is going to steal the show? <laughs> <laughs> She already has, I think, and she's done absolutely nothing so far. <laughs> Good. So when when everyone when everyone gets bored, if anyone gets bored, they can they can just watch the dog. Um, okay. So uh, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna be here for about an hour for you, for everybody. Uh, we're gonna get into uh, in sense an overview of Northwestern. Um, we obviously both uh, love the place and want to articulate to you the great values of the Northwestern experience. Um, why we feel like. Uh, you should invest in a place and in a community like this. Uh, we're going to dig into academics, uh, being a top tier academic institution that's obviously probably first and foremost on your minds. Um, we'll kind of break down the curriculum and, and a lot of the opportunities that are afforded to you and the resources that are afforded to you as a, as a Northwestern student. Um, and then we're going to get into the student life. Ana Maria will talk a little bit about the student life at Northwestern, um, what that feels like, uh, what your peers are doing, uh, where they're exploring, um, where it's a, it's a real value proposition we feel for us is this balance between top tier academics and vibrancy to our student life. It's certainly one of the reasons I chose Northwestern. I was adamant in my college search process that I did not just want to be around intellectually engaging, stimulating students I wanted four years of college. And certainly we feel like that's what you're gonna get if you come to Northwestern. That's what I saw in it. That's what a lot of students who choose to commit to Northwestern see uh, in the place is that balance between academics and student life. So we wanna make sure we dig into that for you. And then I'll touch for a few minutes uh, uh, on admission and financial aid. Um, we'll get into um, kind of our admission policies, which are a little bit trickier this year, obviously, um, and, and uh, our financial aid policies, which we wanna make sure to educate you on um, especially because we are uh, one of the few schools in America that, that really backs it up when we say we, we really want uh, college to be manageable and affordable for anybody that we admit. Um, so I want to make sure to go over that for a few minutes and then we'll open it up to questions. So um, I, know you, I know there's a little chat box over to the right of your screen, probably um, more than welcome to talk, uh, engage amongst yourselves in that chat box, but um, know that we're going to cover a lot in these next 45 minutes. So uh, asking a question in minute three, um, we might cover it in minute 15, right? So we'll give you ample opportunity at the end of Anna Marie and I's overview of Northwestern um, to ask some questions. And we won't be able to get to all of them, but certainly we'd love to um, hear from you and, and answer as many as we can. Um, so with that, let's get started. Um, if you wanna use the chat box right now to just type in where you're from uh, or where you're watching the presentation now, um, I think it'll kind of give you a good sense of what is kind of the first thing that's so special about our community is this tremendous amount of diversity um, that you're going to get at a lot of top tier academic institutions, quite frankly. Um, Northwestern is no different. Uh, we have students from all over the all over the world, more than all 50 countries represented in our student body, but more than our, all 50 states represented in our student body, but more than 95 countries are represented in our student body. And it's not just geographic diversity. Uh, we're a mid-sized university with 8,000 and students who descend on this half mile wide by a mile long campus in Evanston, Illinois. It's the first suburb north of Chicago. Uh, and they're all coming from different geographic backgrounds, socioeconomic backgrounds, ethnic backgrounds, religious backgrounds. They have different academic interests. They have different political uh, passions. Um, and, and one of the great things about your Northwestern experience 
uh, is that you're going to be able to learn from all of those students. Um, I did not realize that. I did not have that experience articulated to me uh, when I came to Northwestern, but the biggest value of my four years at Northwestern was that I learned so much more from my peers than I did from my professors. And that is not a knock against the faculty. We're about to dig into academics. You're going to get to know and see firsthand, hear firsthand um, that we have world-class faculty and they will teach you a ton and they will help you get jobs when you graduate and you're gonna be friends with a handful of them whether you, whether you like it or not. They will not be the primary source of your education at Northwestern. It's going to be from your peers and from your friends. And hopefully over the course of the next 45 minutes, you're gonna understand why. There's a lot of different things about our culture and about our community that I think go into that. Um, one of the first things I was um, scared about, a little bit scared about or worried about coming to a school like Northwestern was that it was gonna be a really cutthroat atmosphere and all these students were gonna be in it for, them, for themselves and they were gonna be super ambitious and academically charged and motivated. Um, and it could not have been farther from the truth. And to me, that was the growth is combining this great diversity in your student body with constantly just learning from them because they're okay wanting to talk to you. Um, they're okay wanting to be your friend. They're okay wanting to listen to you and hear what you bring to the table. And it makes you want to listen and absorb all of their different backgrounds and perspectives. And that starts in academia. I think the first cultural dictation um, is this academic concept that you'll find at Northwestern of curricular flexibility. Um, so Northwestern will have, uh, you'll have three buckets to your curriculum if you come to Northwestern, regardless of what your primary major is, right? You'll have this first bucket that's you take classes within your major. Uh, you'll have the second bucket that's this liberal arts core, and then you'll have a third bucket that's electives. And that those electives can be for whatever you want. You can take classes in all six of our schools, so the, you know, the Northwestern University, the universities and our umbrella, underneath it are six colleges or schools, we refer to them. They are not separate silos across our campus. Uh, we have the Weinberg College of Arts and Sciences, which is our liberal arts college, and then we have five other um, kind of schools or colleges that get a little more focused, right? So they have fewer majors or minors um, and are concentrated around a uh, particular academic area. So engineering, School of Music, School of Education and Social Policy, Medill School of Journalism, um, School of Communication. Um, and, but if you're in the School of Communication, you can take an engineering class. If you're in the School of Journalism, you can take a School of Education and Social Policy class. Um, and that all, that all of a sudden, uh, immediately starts introducing to you this concept of it's okay for me to be in a class because I'm interested in a course topic and to my left and to my right might be people that have a different major than I do or from a different area of the country or of the world than I am and have these different backgrounds and perspectives and we're all starting to talk about one specific idea. So there become a lot of directions that our students will take within academia, um, having different majors and minors and concentrations and take, finding, their, finding different routes based on their various academic passions. And Ana Maria can now kind of talk about some of those directions that students will take. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so while both of my majors are actually housed in Weinberg, I've been able to take classes in all six of the schools housed on campus, the best part being that I wasn't really trying to. Um, some of the courses I took to satisfy requirements for my cognitive science major, um, like the music cognition course I took in Beenan last year, while others I took for fun, like the documentary course I took in Medill last quarter. Whatever school interests you, if all the schools interest you, you can make as many of them a part of your academic experience as you would like. Um, some of you might know what you want this academic experience to be, like my roommate, Emily. Um, she came to Northwestern knowing she wanted to be a design-focused engineer, spending her college career developing her skills on the computer, in the shop, and in the lab. So she immediately started her pursuit of a major in industrial engineering and a Siegel design certificate. She spent hours honing her welding skills in the Ford Design Center, coming up with solutions for real problems and designing real products, like marketable water bottles for real companies modeled after luxury cars. When she wasn't doing that, she was driving around Chicagoland while on contract with an arboretum as part of her senior capstone project. She and her team were busy developing a device to alert homeowners to when their trees are declining in health, helping to speed up expert intervention. They did such an incredible job with the work, they were actually able to sell their product. Certainly not a first for a McCormick capstone team, but a huge win for them. 
She graduated this past spring and has just started her first job as a product manager at Epic. While she's working day in and day out to guide hospitals through the transition process of implementing life-saving medical equipment systems, she constantly calls back to the knowledge she gained from her super hands-on STEM-focused Northwestern journey. And some of us don't know what we want and are in a place of discovery. Throughout my own college application process, I remained consistently undecided on what I wanted to major in. Uncertainty around what I wanted my major to be made me feel all the more certain about what I did want in my college academic experience. I wanted the flexibility and opportunity to engage with a variety of different types of ideas in all different disciplines. Northwestern has offered me that and so much more. My friend Kirthi also was unsure about what she wanted to major in, but definitely found a great option when, after taking lots of different courses across different schools, she applied and was accepted to join the American Studies program. This is a major that allows students to take classes across all subjects and shape their own academic path and concentration. They then put these students into four person sized seminar classes where they can discuss and share experience and expertise from courses all across the university. They finish the major with a thesis project that synthesizes all of these different subjects together. Kirthi ultimately decided to focus her skills on assessing motivation and activism and got so into the subject matter and connected so well with the young activists she interviewed that she ended up getting super involved in a climate change organization called Sunrise and was able to apply her knowledge to some real world on the ground advocacy. Like I mentioned, when I stepped at Northwestern's campus, I was really unsure about what kind of major or coursework I wanted to define my experience here. From the first day I met with my academic advisor and every meeting we've had since, he's encouraged me to pursue any and all coursework that's interested me. After taking all kinds of classes in different areas my freshman and sophomore years, I ended up choosing cognitive science and history. Cognitive science because of how interdisciplinary the major itself is and history, well, take a class with Professor, Dan Professor Daniel Immervar and you'll understand why. I never would have envisioned myself pursuing or landing in these majors had it not been for the encouragement of my advisor and incredible professors who guided and changed my perspective on both my own academic journey and the world at large along the way. And my experience is truly not unique here at Northwestern. With a six to one faculty ratio and 80% of classes being less than 20 people, it's really normal to have meaningful and valuable relationships with faculty. Professors are required to host weekly office hours and more than willing to sit down with students and talk about school, life, or little things like figuring out how to navigate the quarter system. So yeah, the quarter system is if we're zooming back out, um, just to kind of as we dig more and more into these academic opportunities, give you a little bit of a gauge of kind of how this all happens. It seems like, you know, in a way we're almost over promising because you're like, how do you get all this stuff in? And the quarter system is, is the vehicle that allows it to happen. So instead of a traditional semester system, which was the only thing that I heard about as a, as a high school junior and senior, um, where there's this thing called the quarter system where it's, Several colleges will have it. You might hear about it from, from some other colleges too. Our quarter system will break the school year up into four equal quarters. The fourth quarter is your summer quarter. That is your summer. You are not expected to go to school for that. You can if you want. Chicago is a great summer city. If you want to stay, take a couple classes, um, there are classes happening. But for all intents and purposes, you're on a trimester system. You're coming to school for fall quarter, winter quarter, spring quarter, instead of two semesters. And when you're on a trimester system, typically taking four classes a, a quarter, uh, you're taking 12 classes a year, so 48 before you graduate, juxtaposed to a semester system where you're probably taking five classes a semester, 10 a year, 40 before you graduate. So eight extra classes. That's what allows Northwestern to keep you intensive within your major. You're not compromising what you want to get your degree in, right? What industry you might want to go into, but then also have this liberal arts core that gets you out and about to a lot of different subjects and discovering a lot of different cool classes or a cool history professor or whatever, right? Um, and then it also gives you this elective bank to explore secondary academic interests, tertiary academic interests, and to start incorporating a lot of um, the peripheral thing, the peripheral academic opportunities that you think about when you think about college. So it's not just these great 
you know, academic programs and majors that you're interested in. It's not even just, oh, I have a, an ability to have a primary major in one school and have a minor in a completely different school, or I'm an economics major and I'm interested in business, but I want the marketing side of the business. So I'm going to go into the school of journalism and take this certificate program, which is six classes. It's in integrated marketing communication. So I can add that to my resume when I graduate. It's all of that within the classroom, but then it's outside of the classroom too. Still, still Still within academia, but all of these things that happen outside of the classroom, whether it's uh, research, study abroad, um, internships, residencies, all of this starts getting built into the curriculum in many in many respects um, because you have this elective bank. So you're never asking Northwestern to say, hey, I have something really cool that I want to do outside of the classroom or an employer that I'm really interested in exposing myself to. Um, can I do this? And then they're saying, yeah, that'd be great. Why don't you balance that with your full course load, right? It gives Northwestern the opportunity to say these electives and this elective bank is for you to chase anything that you're interested in within the realm of academia. So if it carries this academic connotation, go for it. Um, and the more you dig into Northwestern and dig into kind of all of these opportunities um, within the realm of academia, the more you're going to find that a lot of our students pursue this. It's not necessarily because they're overachievers. Many of them are, um, but it's because they can do it within the confines of their curricula. Um, so innovation is, is, is something that uh, is really popular on campus. You'll see all these innovation centers around campus. If you're uh, a biology major, but you're interested in filmmaking, you can go to Studio 22 and have access to funding and make meet other people that want to shoot a documentary in downtown Chicago and you go do it and you have the equipment and you have the resources. Um, you might be, uh, you might have started a startup already in high school um, and you're interested in entrepreneurial stuff and you want to go to the garage, which is our new uh, incubator on campus is an innovation center. It's one of the, in my opinion, one of the best things Northwestern has done in the last five years um, is build this space for anyone interested in entrepreneurial work, um, getting startups off the ground, being part of the startup scene to go and have access to funding, have access to uh, people who have already done it that were renting out space and they're op fully operating startups um, out of this space. So you can go ask them questions to have social events, study space, conference rooms. Um, it's just an unbelievable space that's just, you know, you have at your fingertips because you go to a school like this. Um, and that's just innovation center. So then we trickle on into, into research and all of these other areas, Ana Maria. Yeah, so through faculty support, academic preparation, and the $3.5 million Northwestern allocates annually solely for undergraduate research, it's so, so, so easy for students to get involved in all kinds of research experiences on campus. A few of the ways students get to access these funds and explore their research interests are through research assistantship grants, individual research grants, travel grants, and fellowships. Sometimes student take, students take advantage of these funds in your typical lab environment. Like my friend Regina, who spent her summer at our Feinberg Medical School researching to design a 3D printed ovary for women who've lost ovarian function due to chemotherapy. Often though, students wear nothing like a lab coat and goggles while conducting their research projects and can be found anywhere but the lab. Like my friend Ryan, who conducted work interviewing interracial couples, which he tur ultimately turned into a creative writing project. Research can also take you abroad, like it did for my friend Leah, who I met during my first of two study abroad experiences. She and I met while spending the summer in Guatemala together through the GESI program, which takes students to a number of different countries and using combined coursework and hands-on experience, guides students in working in teams to design and implement community development projects. Leah created an, created an innovative, cost-effective waste removal system in the town we were working in. She was able to win a research grant to go back to Guatemala to continue her work and re-engage and build more sustainable, lasting relationships with the community she had spent so much time with. Now she is starting her second of a two-year Princeton and Africa fellowship, where she, she is conducting similar work and learning from new relationships she is forming in Rwanda. She was able to have all of these meaningful experiences at no cost to her through both direct Northwestern funding and other resources. At Northwestern, aid travels with you, so you, have that, you can have that abroad experience even twice or three times, regardless of financial background. 
around. The second time I went abroad, I went to Florence, Italy with Megan. This was also Megan's second time abroad. She had spent the summer before Italy studying at the London School of Economics. As an econ major, it was really important to her to get the perspective of studying within her field from an international perspective, as well as studying outside of her academic area in a new setting. Thus, she was able to attack our Mediterranean food and culture class, where we did a lot of work learning about food sustainability and proper wine tasting practices with the same enthusiasm and rigor as she had her classes at LSE, knowing that she was getting a well-rounded and nuanced educational experience in different ways in different places. With over 150 opportunities to choose from, you really get to design your own abroad path, whether it be more traditional like Megan, less traditional like Leah, or even a shorter experience like the Beanin students who traveled through China performing over spring break. Students also find time to intern abroad, although they do love to do all kinds of intern internship experiences closer to home. Over 70% of students reported having an internship during their time at Northwestern. Many schools have ways to support students both financially and academically in their internship pursuits. Last summer, my friend Larissa completed an internship at the Gabby Gifford Law Center, advocating for gun reform in Congress, which counted as her School of Education practicum, a required part of the curriculum, so she was able to get her incredible work counted towards her degree. Not only was she able to find the internship through the support of the School of Education and our Northwestern Career Advancement Office, but she was able to be financially supported in the internship through our Summer Internship Grant Program, or SIGP. That way, she didn't have to spend time worrying about the burden of accepting an unpaid internship and was able to focus all of her attention and energy into doing the work she's passionate about. The things she learned and connections she made at that internship experience helped her land an internship this summer with the British Parliament, where she is working on similar advocacy in her home country. SESPI isn't the only school with built-in internship requirements. An essential part of the Medill School of Journalism curriculum is that students are required to spend time doing their journalism residency, doing real on-the-ground journalism work in a practical real-world setting. Engineers have similar opportunities through co-op and really any student in any school can take advantage of credit for interning through Chicago field studies. Yeah, and, I, and then I think, you know, now we have this concept of, okay, we're learning about all these great experiences that happen while you're at Northwestern and that's the, the four-year investment and then kind of what happens after that. Um, our football team has a really good slogan when they're recruiting um, to our football players that I've kind of adopted just in the admission world, um, that a 40-year investment is greater than a four-year investment, right? Um, and at Northwestern, we believe that. We believe that, that your investment to attend Northwestern is not just for the four years you're here. Um, it's for the rest of your life. And since I'm only a little bit older than Anna Maria, I'll talk, <laughs> can talk a little bit about um, kind of how, how I've seen that trajectory play out with um, with my peers and with my friends. Um, and it's, it's honestly been one of the coolest parts to see all of these experiences, to see that fusion of the quarter system and this curricular flexibility and all of these global opportunities that you have over the course of your four years and all these employers that you're gonna become connected with and these uh, relationships you develop with your professors who are world-class faculty and the, because they're world-class faculty, they have all of these relationships all over the place. Um, you might hear a term uh, on the interwebs called the purple mafia, um, this, 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 pen, this powerful alumni network um, that's constantly talked about. One of my favorite things about it was that it happened really quickly, right? I always would go visit colleges and they would tell me about their you know, famous alums and I would look at the, the alumni walls and it'd be full of a bunch of 50 and 60 year olds. And one of the things I wanted to know was, well, what's gonna happen when I'm 23, 25 years old? Like that's my immediate future. Um, and I think all of these experiences that happen that you get to take advantage of while you're in college really help accelerate that. And to me, that was the coolest thing to see. This was happening immediately after graduation, right? It's not just 96% of the class of 2016 at Northwestern, you know, was able to um, chase something um, that they were interested in after college within six months of graduation. It's the level at which they were doing it, right? One of my favorite classes I took at Northwestern uh, that's actually turned into a very popular class. It was kind of new when I started taking it uh, is Marriage 101. Um, and we had 20 students in our class. Um, and it was, I took it my last quarter, my last term senior year. And we went into a, a group project and uh, in my group was, uh, uh, I was a journalism major in this psychology class in the relationship psychology class. 
Um, and in my group was a political science major and a theater major. And literally within years after graduation, obviously we become friends, we get to know each other, we're hanging out, they're on my social media feed, back then it was Facebook. Um, and, and within years after graduation, uh, the political science major got drafted by the Pittsburgh Steelers, he won a Super Bowl uh, within a couple years after graduation, and the theater major was a lead in Argo, won Best Picture at the Academy Awards. And that's, that's your social feed, that's the tangible example of you seeing these Northwestern experiences manifest themselves. And it it wasn't just journalism majors that I was getting to know and being exposed to, right? It was all these elements. It was that my best friend happened to be a history major, but then he became chief of staff for an Illinois senator like quickly. Um, and that was the amazing thing to me, opening up my eyes to all of these different industries and having my relatively young friends um, being in these positions of power. It, I knew I was going to go to school as a journalism major who was wanting to go to a top journalism school with future ESPN Sports Center anchors and um, NBC Nightly News reporters and New York Times writers. I did not realize how much I was going to grow as a person by seeing all of these other areas and seeing my friends and my peers accelerate into these um, these industries um, because of all the experiences they had as an undergrad. So um, that's kind of the most important thing I wanted to touch on is kind of what all of those experiences do for you, um, not just when you're ultimately when you're 50 and 60 years old, um, but immediately because you've already kind of had exposure into these industries, um, even while you're an undergrad. Um, so that's that kind of wraps up the, the academic trajectory, right? That takes us to, to well beyond um, the undergraduate experience. And I promise we really wanted to get into student life too, because we're really um, proud of that culture and community here. So Ana Maria, um, since you're kind of in it right now, why don't you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. I think that what you were speaking about is absolutely what my experience has been. Um, Penelope's rolling over behind <laughs> Um, but everyone here at Northwestern understands that there is no one way to quote do um, Northwestern. Everyone is kind of on their own path, exploring and engaging with their own passions, interests, aspirations. Um, but that is truly the beauty of this school. No matter what it is that gets you up in the morning or to raise your hand in class or commute downtown, that is treated as valid and everyone is so incredibly excited to support you in that. No one is trying to get ahead or be everyone else. We're all here to help and support each other in whatever excites and fulfills us. Um, at Northwestern, every student lives on campus for two years so that everyone can have the opportunity to formulate and strengthen a community that is centered around campus. So students live in clusters of different residential communities and have the opportunity to form relationships and establish a sense of closeness and belonging with other members of these communities. Uh, live in faculty and graduate students actually organize community events like hot chocolate socials and live shows um, to give students the space to take a break and spend time together. I personally was able to take a break from the dorm life, dorm life with the occasional movie night with friends in my faculty and residences on campus house. She proved to be an invaluable resource and support. Spotting her adorable four-year-old running around the halls of my dorm every once in a while was an added bonus. But community isn't limited to where you live at Northwestern. It starts the first day you arrive on campus with Wildcat Welcome, our week-long orientation for first-year students. During the week, you learn how to navigate everything there is to know about Northwestern alongside a close-knit group of other new students. An older student known as a peer advisor is around the entire time to show you the ropes and guide you as you participate in Northwestern traditions like March Through the Arch and running across the field at your first football game. Students also often look to significant affinity spaces, whether that be the Multicultural Center, the Black House, or Hillel, to name a few, to find a tighter-knit community within the larger Northwestern family. The purple pride that is introduced to students at Wildcat Welcome really does grow throughout the school year with events like Dillo Day. Dillo Day, the largest run student musical festival in the country, student musical festival in the country, is the perfect time for everyone to step away from their studying and take a day to fully relax and enjoy the incredible concerts. In the past, we've had artists like Chance the Rapper, Young the Giant, and Daniel Caesar. The beauty of Dillo is that you feel so at home going to the events and listening to the artists because you're surrounded by friends and enjoying an event that is able to happen because of the hard work of all of your friends on Mayfest, the student organization that makes Dillo Day a reality. 
Student organizations like these are a huge part of the undergraduate experience and another way that students create community on campus. With over 500 student organizations as a starting point, students have the freedom to create and maintain communities in and through whatever ways they feel best. If that interest is musical, it certainly can be fulfilled with orchestras, bands, and 14 acapella groups. A few of my roommates are in an acapella group called Thunk, so I like to call myself a Thunk fanatic since I don't think I've missed a show since freshman year. I was pretty sad though when they decided not to invite me on their trip to South Africa to teach acapella in some local schools like I wasn't an official member of the group or something. If performing is your thing, then there's comedy, musical theater, or dance, and all other types of groups. If it's not, there's tons of opportunities to play on different teams through IM and club sports, and or participate in different volunteer and community building experiences through one of our many service-oriented clubs or organizations. The great thing about all of these organizations is that they connect people within our Evanston campus, but also more broadly to the Evanston and Chicago communities at large. Yeah, that's really the last piece of, of the Northwestern experience that we haven't touched on yet, but I think it's important to note that um, not everything you do at Northwestern, one of the great things is that uh, you have this brilliant, vibrant community in this little half mile wide by a mile long rectangle I've referred to, um, but, but we're just north of Chicago. We're a few miles from the Chicago border. You're in that first suburb north, so you're close enough to this leading world city um, to be able to have this geographic trifecta between neat college campus, downtown Evanston, which is the, the uh, block off of campus, right? It's, the, it's this quaint historic um, six block by six block grid full of shops and restaurants and movie theater and everything you need as a college student. Um, and then there's Chicago right there. Public, public transit still gets up to us. You feel like you're on a college campus. You don't, you walk out of your dorm room, you don't have a 50 story skyscraper breathing down on top of you, but in 30 minutes, you're in whatever neighborhood you want to in Chicago. Chicago is a great city of neighborhoods. It's not only just a world-class city, but it's got all these defined neighborhoods for whenever you want to go eat, or you want to see a specific concert, or you want to go to a museum, or you want to, a cultural experience. Um, so many great, neat things to do with your friends if you want to get outside of campus. So all that, all these great community traits um, that, that Ana Maria was talking about with the student body on campus, that can transcend into a smaller civic community in Evanston, or get as big as you want into literally one of the biggest cities in the world, um, 30 minutes away from you. Um, very cheaply. So uh, so that geographic trifecta is really what attracts a lot of students as well, to be able to kind of have all those different um, styles of playgrounds um, to, to engage with for over the course of your four years here. All right, so that kind of ends the, the overview. Um, I, wanted to, I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about admission and financial aid. If you want to start asking your questions in the chat box, you can, because uh, we're a few minutes away from that. Um, but especially uh, in, in pandemic times, we want to kind of go over uh, our admission policies and um, how we're reviewing applications and then also uh, touch on financial aid, as I mentioned. Um, please know uh, that uh, we are here for you. We are all going through one of the most unique things about this pandemic is it has affected everybody in the world. <laughs> and so um, we are also, our everyone on our staff is our students, our students that are working in our office are, are all going through this together. Um, and so we're trying to uh, think of ways to bring the Northwestern experience to you. Probably a good time to plug our YouTube channel. I wouldn't just go to Northwestern's YouTube channel. I would go to Northwestern Admissions YouTube channel. Uh, we're trying to get you in front of as many students as possible, um, give you a real sense of of kind of who's who's in this community and and how they tick and what kinds of experiences they've had. Um, and we're also uh, pretty well equipped to, to review your application, even in a, a weird year like this, right? And so what, what we've done for our current seniors who might be thinking about applying to Northwestern is we've uh, lifted that testing requirement. So our uh, we have a test optional policy for applicants this fall. Um, and, and the other parts of the application is going to be a lot, we're going to approach it a lot of the same ways we've done in, in any year because we were a school that always practiced holistic admission. And holistic admission um, 
is, is, uh, is an approach um, that tries to understand where the applicant is coming from, um, the context behind that, the opportunities that have been given to them. So whether you're talking about kind of back to my bucket analogy, the, the anatomy of an application, right? The academic bucket, uh, what you're doing outside of the classroom, uh, what kinds of essays are you writing? Um, how interested, you know, how, how passionate you are and well-versed you are, how knowledgeable you are about how you would fit into the Northwestern community. All of that comes with context. Um, and so we're going to be reviewing these applications uh, the same this year as we did in years past. The only difference is there's going to probably be a lot more context and a lot more uh, in a lot of the applications, right? There's going to be uh, things that have affected and impacted you this year. Um, we encourage you to write about those things. Um, most, uh, I think all of the applications we accept will have now um, a, a prompt that will allow you to address um, COVID specifically <laughs> and how it's, how it's impacted you. Um, but if not, if any time, if at any point you need to get anything into your application, any part of your story um, that makes you who you are and um, describes where you're coming from and the environments from where you're coming, we want to know about all of that. That helps us, that helps gauge our decision. Um, and so please encourage, you know, encourage, we can talk about, you know, GPAs, we can talk about, um, you know, how many extracurriculars you're doing, a lot of that stuff. Um, doesn't necessarily, is, isn't as important as who you are, what you're bringing to the table in terms of the Northwestern community, uh, what the Northwestern community can offer you to get you to where you want to go in life. Um, all of these things encompass all of the different components of the application, right? Um, if, you're, if your uh, GPA is X, well, I still want to know uh, what high school do you go to, right? Do you have a weighted GPA or an unweighted GPA? Uh, does your class, does your class in your school rank or do they not rank? Did you have a shaky sophomore first semester because you got in a bad car accident and had to miss a month of school, right? These are all components that you're going to bring to to your story, and we need to synthesize and absorb all of that before we're we're trying to before we predict um, the likelihood of you having tremendous success at Northwestern and fitting into our community. Um, so that's kind of the ad admission process. Uh, financial aid, want to make sure we talk about our financial aid policies um, because full disclosure, we're one of the best uh, financial aid programs in the country. Do not make the mistake when you're looking at colleges of looking on a website and saying, this is how much this college costs me, right? Um, that's how much the college costs to attend it if someone is paying full cost of attendance, right? So at Northwestern, uh, we meet 100% of demonstrated need. And what does that mean? Well, that means that we're not going to ever ask a family that we admit to pay more than that family can afford per year to send their child to college. And if you want to get a sense of what that would cost you or what that number is, you can go on our financial aid website and you can go to the net price calculator and you can sit down with your family, parent, guardian, whoever, whoever's uh, applying to college with you, so to speak. Um, and you can fill out that net price calculator to get a sense of what your expected family contribution might be. EFC is known in the business. That EFC is the number that the federal government deems is manageable for this family to pay per year to send their child to college. So as a general rule of thumb, that's what our, that's the number we're trying to, our financial aid office is trying to get to when we give our families their financial aid packages. We are not packaging loans into this, this aid package for you. The, the, the difference between our cost of attendance and what your family can afford to pay per year to go to college will be in scholarship and grant money. It will not be in money that we ask you to pay back years down the road. Um, and so that's what we mean when we say we meet 100% of, of demonstrated need with no loans. And the two big parts to that, right? What can your family afford? And can we get you to that point um, without having to take out loans? And that's what we try to do at Northwestern. Um, so again, if you think you're, you're Aid is going to be a, a, a component of your college decision-making process. 
Um, if you think that's a factor in your college decision, we really encourage you to fill out our net price calculator, uh, talk to our financial aid office, talk to our admission office, get a sense of what that will be for you. We have the luxury at Northwestern of giving you a pretty good sense of that um, before you even fill out your FAFSA and fill out your CSS profile, these, these financial aid forms that are required to apply for financial aid at Northwestern, because we know if we can get a sense of what your family can afford, that's going to be pretty close to, to what we're going to ask you to pay uh, to come to Northwestern. Okay, uh, so uh, we're done with kind of the, the overview part of it, and we have 20 or so minutes to, to address some um, questions. So let's, uh, let's go to the chat and let's see. Ana Maria, this question's for you. Oh, I have I have several questions for you. Let's start with because we are have they about Penelope. <laughs> what I said, are they about Penelope? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> um, although they're very curated, so uh, uh, we haven't talked about it yet. How's the climate? You want to talk about the climate? You're California, and I'm Florida, so we both had a little bit of an adjustment coming to Northwestern. Yes, yes. Um, I definitely get this question a lot. Um, I'll be up front. I still don't like winter personally. It's just not my favorite thing. I get really cold really easily, but I will say there are some very fun aspects to doing winter. I think if you're coming from a warmer place, um, having seasons is really was like a fun experience for me and is still fun for me. Um, and I think you definitely can adjust to it. You learn how to layer really well valuable life skill um and you know you you figure it out you're okay your friends who know how to do winter help you out too so it's definitely it's a learning curve but it's not too bad when i i i struggled for so many years trying to uh get through to our or trying to adequately convey to our uh, more tropical climate audience, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. like it was going to be okay. Like, don't make it the only reason you go to <laughs> school, right? And I finally got it that like, okay, so we have one of the highest retention rates in the country. We have one of the highest graduation rates in the country. And Florida, Texas, California are some of our heaviest represented states. So people are coming and they're staying <laughs> very happy. <laughs> um, there you go. Yeah, I definitely <laughs> would not make it a factor in terms of, um, whether you apply or not or whether you come or not and I will say too I kind of it kind of gives me a little bit of like you know with my family they don't get it and I'm like you don't understand what I like have been through and so it kind of gives you like a little bit of a leverage there too I guess <laughs> <laughs> and the seasons are great I growing up in Florida I didn't I never saw seasons and I would mm -hmm. I'll, I'll deal with a few months of winter if I can get that fall and that spring is 70 degree weather and no humidity. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> um, all right, how about this one? Uh, can you double major in two different schools? Even though you're double, even though you have concentrations in the same school, um, can you double major in two different schools? Yes, um, double majoring is like incredibly common here. Um, people always kind of, when I say I'm a double major, they're like, oh, you're a double major. And I'm like, no, at Northwestern, it's a quarter system. It's very, very, very doable. Um, a lot of my friends just kind of fell into double majors, I would kind of say. Um, so you can double major if you're in Weinberg, you can kind of double major within like different schools. So whether that be like Medill or Sespe or um, kind of like either within the school or across schools. Um, and then if you're outside of Weinberg trying to double major, that gets a little more complicated, but it is doable. Like if you're in Beenan and want to do dual degree in McCormick or something like that. Um, so there's like a whole litany of different combinations that you can kind of take on and it's very, very easy to do. Yeah, the most popular way is if you're in either the Weinberg College of Arts and Sciences or the, one of the other five schools and your second major or, co or minor, let's say, is in the College of Arts and Sciences because you're already taking as part of that curriculum some arts and science courses right. and right. use those courses to butt up against electives or whatever other courses you're taking and make that your second major. So that's what happened with me. I was a journalism major. Um, I thought that was the only thing I wanted to study in college. And then my peer advisor first year told me, you have to take intro to sociology. It's from Charles Moskos. He was Bill Clinton's military advisor. He's this short, bald, funny guy, and he makes it so fun and so interesting. And my peer advisor was right. And I loved sociology. And I also understood that, well, 
this will help me be a better journalist, like understanding societies, how they function, um, how they interact. And, and so I took more sociology courses to fulfill a liberal arts concentration that was part of the journalism curriculum, right? Yeah. And then once you get to, to the four unit, six unit concentration that you, that you want in your, as your liberal arts core, now all of a sudden out of my 16 electives, I only had to take half of that and I became a double major without, I didn't come in with any AP credits. Um, I was just a normal curriculum and I still had eight electives after that. So a lot of times it can happen organically where you just you know, are taking these classes, you take a course topic that you're interested in, um, you realize you really like it and you're using a lot of what's already built into your curriculum to become that second major or have a second minor or have two minors um, as long as it's you know, there's those subjects are within, um, within the, this liberal arts area. Is mm -hmm. that fair, Ana Maria? Yeah, I think that's 100% true. And I see that all over the place with a lot of my friends. Awesome. Um, uh, we have a does Northwestern recalculate GPA question? Um, no, we're putting every single transcript and application uh, into a uh, 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 container, right? And we're judging what does that GPA, again, back to holistic and contextual, right? What does that GPA mean within the context of your environment, right? So we're trying to isolate that GPA and that high school and that environment and determine two things. Based on this, do you care about academics and do you care about challenging yourself academically? And that's going to be looking that's going to look differently at a lot in a lot of different ways, right? And so if you have an unweighted GPA, we don't want to try to recalculate that to, to a scale that's uniform across everything, right? Uh, everybody. There could be a really mean English teacher that prevents, you know, is given out one A in the last 10 years because that's just what they do. Um, and they love just giving, you know, not giving out A's. Um, that shouldn't, that shouldn't be penal to you in our process, right? That shouldn't, we shouldn't say, oh, well, that's not a straight A student and we have a straight A student in a different environment. We shouldn't say, oh, you're in the top 9% of your class in, uh, from a really competitive school in Georgia. And we're gonna try to compare that to the homeschool student in Colorado that says that they're the valedictorian because they're in a class of one of one, right? It's not to say that either of those environments is better than the other one, but they're completely different environments. So we do not wanna try to practice this uh, notion of trying to make everybody uniform. We're isolating you in your environment and determining based on what we have, do you care about academics and do you care about challenging yourself academically? Um, what are our favorite traditions at Northwestern? So you already talked about Dillo. Do you wanna list a couple other ones? Yeah, there's quite a few of them. I think one of them that I've been thinking about a lot lately is painting the rock, um, which I've been thinking about because I'm like, oh my God, I'm a senior and I have yet to paint the rock. And I'm just, now it's at the top of my priority list. Um, but basically, you go out, you guard the rock for 24 hours, um, and then you can paint it whatever you want, um, as long as you kind of like follow the follow the rules of kind of guarding it and everything. And there's actually a rock camera um, that people like to talk about, so you can watch it at any point if you're at home and you want to log on and do that. You're more than welcome to. Um, so that's a really fun one. Um, I touched on these, but like just the beginning, early first year traditions of like March through the arch and all of these kind of things where you really kind of are brought in and taught the Northwestern spirit of things um, are very, very fun. Um, for me, informal tradition with my friends is swimming in Lake Michigan beginning and end of the year, I just think is a great way to start and end the school year. One of my favorite things about traditions at Northwestern, or you'll you'll hear all of our students, you know, get up and start talking about all of our organizations, and and oftentimes you'll hear this organ, this particular organization or event is the largest student run, <laughs> blah, right? Um, and a lot of it stems from our administration backing off and saying, listen, like our students are talented, our students are competent, 
They want to do it. Um, let's let them own it. Let's give them the resources, but let's let them own it. And so, right, so it's the largest student run dance marathon in the country, mm -hmm. student produced musical in the country. Um, and, and so to me, uh, when, when, when I hear whatever traditions I hear about, it's so cool that so, so many of these traditions were kind of started and, and perpetuated and still are run um, by the students. Mm -hmm. um, well, another one, another one, like, it's, you don't think of as a tradition necessarily, but I love the fact that we have reading weeks built in just before finals. I think it's a yes. testament to the larger picture of, of something that I was, you know, one of my biggest concerns about going to a top tier academic environment was this um, hypercharged kind of academic tension that would always be there because I wanted four years of college. Um, and I think this tradition of reading week where it's the week before finals every term where all classes will stop um, and, and kind of give you a breather, let you write your papers, let you get some extra studying in um, to kind of ease the tension. Another tradition that goes along with that is the primal scream that happens every Sunday night, right before finals, where wherever you are on campus, you just start screaming and letting out some stress. Um, we're going to do on our, uh, on our uh, YouTube channel, I think this month, we're going to um, make it kind of a, a student support month to highlight all the stuff that mm. does to um, support its students both academically and, and socially and personally. And I think it's a, it's a, a really kind of not talked about enough feature of, of all these different things that kind of go to, to making your, um, your campus life um, that much better. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. It, besides, besides marketing, here's a good one. Ana Maria, besides marketing, what are other popular majors for business? Um, and this might be a good opportunity for you to just talk about how uh, business or law or medicine, these pre-professional tracks are tracks and not necessarily like template majors at Northwestern. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's a very, very cool aspect of um, being here is I think that, you know, the people who are here to kind of support you on these tracks. So like pre-med, pre-law, whatever it might be, um, there's designated, so you have an advisor for your general academic experience, right? Like we we're talking about. And then we have this advisor for if you're doing that pre-professional track um, to help you through that as well. And they recognize um, the value in kind of like students having their own individual like academic interests and passions and things outside of just like I want to be a doctor or I want to be a lawyer or whatever it might be. Um, so they're very supportive I think of students kind of really choosing to say like for example my friend Kat is a history major and she's pre-med and so she sits there and she gets to do reading and writing in a history kind of sense which kind of like helps her expand her you know way of thinking and all of that in this very like humanities focused way while still she has plenty of time to kind of like complete those pre-med courses and be on track to kind of do that med school application and so um I think that because of the flexibility of the quarter system because there's so much space to take all these different types of classes it does you are not defined by oh I'm pre-med or oh I'm pre-law like you are defined very much by what you would like to study and you have time to fit in everything else with that um here's here's one that might make you think for a couple seconds but what is the what is one of the most underutilized aspects of Northwestern? Oh, that is a good question. There's so and I, I say this with complete sincerity, there's so many resources that I feel like all the time I'm like on some website or talking to a friend and they're like, oh, did you know that there's this to help you do that? Um, I'm trying to think of. I feel like this is an obvious one but like the northwestern career center and again this sounds very obvious like there's so many subsets and resources within it it's not just like oh go and meet with a career counselor it's like oh you could meet with a career counselor to talk about a job or you could meet with a career counselor to practice casing for a consulting interview or you could meet with a career counselor or someone in the nca to like you know, get funding for purchasing an interview outfit, which I did before, um, or to participate in like different things like that. So there's like all different facets of um, the career center there where there's this kind of never ending 
means to kind of tap into those resources um, and get connected with alumni or with interviews or just talk about your interests and see where that might lead you career wise. So there's kind of like all these sorts of different parts to that um, department, I would say. It's so true. Like I came out, okay, good. They have a good like career advancement office. And then you get immersed in your world and you have your peers, you know, helping you out and you have faculty helping you out. And like, I would walk into the, each department has their own little career <laughs> advancement. You know, um, I would walk into the journalism building and there'd be a flyer and it'd be like, Hey, CNN's here on Thursday. Like fill out your name if you want to talk to them. And, and all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, I, I, my senior year, I have like professors giving my names to companies and they're calling me. And like, I, I'm like, oh wait, I, I haven't gone into the career advancement center yet that has all of these resources that you mentioned. So um, that's, that's definitely a, a really good one. Um, We have a question. It's a it, it's a little bit broad, but but maybe you can talk, especially because you're in the College of Arts and Sciences, which is gets a majority of our students. Um, can you go over the distribution requirements? So not the major, not the bucket full of classes in your major, and not the bucket of electives, but that that middle bucket. Mm -hmm, definitely, yeah. Um, so everyone in every school kind of has a variation of this, um, but. For Weinberg, the College of Arts and Sciences specifically, um, you kind of have like six, six different like little buckets of, so like literature or ethics and values or different things like that where you have to take two courses in each of those. Um, it's very much the type of thing where, I don't know, at least, you know, when I spoke to my advisor about it and I kept being like, oh, but what about my distros? What about my distros? And he was like, don't worry, just like take what you wanna take, take what you're interested in and I promise like, that'll work itself out. Um, and it really has, like, I have rarely actually taken a class kind of with the intention of like, oh, I need to fulfill these requirements. It's more just kind of to make sure you are kind of trying out different things in different disciplines, but um, they're pretty big buckets. So you can really just choose like things that interest you, things that excite you, sign up for classes that you think are cool. And over the course of your four years, you will absolutely kind of start checking those boxes off. Awesome. Well, we are almost at the hour. So I wanted to use this opportunity. First of all, thank you, Ana Maria, for shedding so much great insight into the Northwestern experience, but also thank all of you for um, listening to us and getting a little bit better sense of, of the value of a Northwestern experience and what kind of uh, community is, is over here in Chicago. Um, really mean it with the utmost sincerity. Be well, be healthy. Um, good luck with your college search processes. Know that we're here to help. Um, I, I say it in kind of the, the groups I've been talking to lately, but um, I know that it's going to be your college search process is going to be weird and different in a lot of ways from the, those you know, who are older than you who went through it. Um, but in a lot of ways, it's going to be better too. If you want to kind of look at the silver linings, the higher ed industry is an industry that um, historically kind of moves somewhat slowly. <laughs> and, uh, and I think it, the, these times have woken up um, colleges and college admission offices and administrators to understand um, that we need to be providing you content on the channels and on the, the media by which you consume content. Um, and so the, the, the YouTube channels and the, the various digital programming and the college admission offices have never been as accessible as they've been now. So utilize that, um, get in touch with us, get in touch with students at, at our universities. Um, and, and hopefully we can give you just as good of a sense as if you would have been otherwise been able to come to campus um, and talk to us in person. So again, be healthy, be well, and uh, let us know what we can do for you down the road. All right. Good luck, everybody.